Many former post office workers in our region who were wrongly convicted for theft in the Horizon scandal say they're still waiting for compensation. The failure of the post office's computer system resulted in one of the biggest single miscarriages of justice in British history. Hundreds of people running post offices were accused of being responsible for shortfalls in the cash they collected from customers. Some went to prison. The government announced this week that it will foot the bill for compensation, which could run into hundreds of millions of pounds of taxpayers' cash. To date, a total of 72 convictions have been overturned by the courts in unopposed appeals. Hundreds more could follow. Mark Ansell has spoken to two former post office workers who say compensation isn't enough. Well, earlier I spoke to Nick Wallace, who wrote The Great Post Office Scandal, as well as fronting a BBC Panorama special on the story. I asked him why no one has ever been held accountable for what happened. That's Today, with soldiers doing jabs in North, South and West Yorkshire, the move comes as over a quarter of a million booster jabs have been administered in our region in the past week. Figures published by the government show our region currently has the lowest number of confirmed cases of Omicron in England. David Rose joins me now. Uh, what's the latest, David? Yes, yeah, so these figures published by the government today give us an update as to where the Omicron variant is in relation to regions in England. So we can see these figures here. Doctors and politicians are very concerned about this variant and they want more people to get boosted. So what about hospitalisation rates? That is the key figure here. So see, for all reasons, it's about 90% at the moment. If we see a large increase in... Professor Patel, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Thank you. People living in the village of Linton on Ouse near York say it's turned into a ghost town with the closure of the RAF base, which shares its name. There are about 160 military homes in the village, most of which are now standing empty. The village school has also seen pupil numbers plummet. Olivia Richwold reports. Oh, a good luck to her. Now, you may remember earlier in the autumn, we spoke to Marwa Kufi. Here she is, uh, a 20-year-old Afghan woman who fled the Taliban to seek refuge here in Yorkshire. She's been living with her family in a hotel for over three months. She kept this video diary of how she's finding life and what she hopes for the future. I don't find... Marwa for uh, sharing her experience with us. Now... Meet Betty. She's 88 years old and she spent pretty much the last 30 years of them working at a primary school near Bingley. But this week she's decided to hang up her stop sign for good. Ian White's been to, been to meet Eldwick's favourite lollipop lady. Oh, we absolutely do. Uh, good luck for the new chapter, Betty. Do you think when you're 88 you'll be hanging up your barometer? I think I'll be tapping it. <laughs> Christmas. That's the forecast. Very good news. Thank you very much, Paul. Uh, Paul will be back with Phil Bodmer for the late news. Have a lovely evening. Bye-bye.